First impression of Pastor Payne was new pastor. I was very, very new to the church, so just getting my grasp upon pastors, but a very tall guy that's friendly, introduces himself as Tom, and just very chilled out and down to earth, but definitely a thick American accent. My first impression of Pastor Payne seems like a pretty chill dude. My first impression of Pastor Payne was that he was confident. I actually remembered back about 12 months before Pastor Payne became the Australian leader and uh, it was actually at a pastor seminar and he, that was the first time I'd ever met him. It really was a Holy Ghost time. I remember many words being given out and uh, God really ministering there and it was very evident that God's hand was upon our pastor's life. And so when I found out that he was going to be uh, the Australian leader and our pastor, it really was a great uh, encouragement to my heart to remember that time. My first impression of Pastor Payne when he arrived was, whoa, that guy's tall. So being quite a tall individual myself, my first impression of Pastor Payne was, wow, he's really tall. First lasting impression uh, was getting a, a well-deserved butt kicking. I was about to detonate my life, uh, my destiny, and just run off into some sort of insanity. But Pastor Payne sat me down with my mum and said, look, you can do these things, but you're not gonna do that here in this church and you've got to make a decision. And uh, he was the first uh, person, the first man of God to stand up to me. And it was the best thing that ever happened. What impresses me the most about Pastor Payne is he's a man of faith, which is from the Greek word pistis, which means persuasion. And he's a man who persuades. Pastor Payne has a file for everything. I'd go to him with problems that I'd been struggling with in some cases for decades, absolutely at the end of myself. Within minutes, he would ask insightful questions, have an answer, and be able to diagnose the problem, often pulling from an example in a life with a breakthrough that he had, that as I applied, transformed my life. So what impresses me the most uh, about Pastor Payne would have to be his integrity. His, just his consistency. Um, yeah, just just his, his, how constant he is, his consistency, his, uh, his, his focus. The, the whole 12 years he's been here, just he, he you can, you can, he, 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 he it's, it's like, um, <laughs> <laughs> just let me get to my thoughts, consistency. What else? One thing, because we're only gonna. You, you tell us a billion things. Consistency is redemption. Okay, I got it. I said no, but it has. <laughs> sure. You just, just, chop. Hey, chop, chop it, chop it. Yeah. Just by, let me, let me gather my thoughts. Yeah. Correct. Have you got someone else coming in? Yes. What impresses me the most about Pastor Payne is his consistency. Well, what impresses me most about Pastor Payne is the ability that he has to hear from God. In 12 years, there's only been one time that Pastor Payne hasn't had an answer for me. It was a number of years ago now, but I, I called him with a question and his response was, I don't know. And the point was, Glenn, you need to get a hold of God for yourself. But as I begin to think back over the last 12 years and begin to realize Every single question I've ever asked him, he's had the answer, or at least an answer, from God, from Scripture, from life experience, and it really has uh, impacted my life and my wife's life uh, in every single way, with our children, uh, with our finances, obviously with our ministry, and our lives have been incredibly blessed, and the truth is they'll never ever be the same. The thing that impresses me the most about Pastor Payne is that he's willing to speak the hard things to people, even if they don't want to hear them, to see them grow in God and to see them fulfill their destiny. What impresses me the most about Pastor Payne is for somebody that's in such a high level of leadership, that is extremely wise and very, very intelligent, he's extremely unassuming. He's approachable, he makes time for you, he invites you to fellowship, and he actually calls you back immediately after you give him a call which is extremely impressive. Pastor Payne is a very strong leader, uh, one of the strongest leaders that I've ever met. And I've always said to him that uh, if he ever wants to start a revolution, 
just uh, say the word and I'll be there. The thing that impressed me the most about Pastor Payne was he is a doer of the work of evangelism. I remember we were on outreach in the city. We were doing a drama of some kind and I looked across and Pastor Payne was witnessing with and then praying with a young guy, straight up. I hadn't seen that in a senior pastor in the 20 odd years that I'd been saved to that point. Pastor Payne typifies the true meaning of the word pastor. Uh, he is a true leader uh, and he loves people, he, he cares about us and that's what hits me with Pastor Payne. He's a pastor and uh, therefore when you uh, submit your heart to him, um, it, it works. It works in all areas of your life and ministry and it brings true blessing from God upon your life and so that's what I appreciate about uh, our pastor. My favourite painism is Google Out. You are responsible for everything, including the weather. Thou shalt not be stupid. The elf diet, which is eat less food. You either go big or you go home. Sin make you stupid. We've been to the moon and back. Of course we can do it. Uh, second pain, uh, chapter 3, verse 4. If you knew how much I held back, you'd commend me. Jerome, are you sure you want to be a pastor? Well, welcome to the rest of your life. A uh, conversation would start one of two ways. Hey Steve, have you got a sec? That's good. Uh, but hey Steve, have you got a minute? Uh, oh glory. <laughs> so of course the obvious quote that everyone knows is no one. No one. Nobody. 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 I mean nobody. Has a right. Has the right. Has the right. To be weird. To be weird. To be weird. There, you know, there were many phone calls when you're, you're just pastoring and uh, just being out on the field. There, you're ringing back, asking, asking pastor for advice. And so, one particular conversation was there was some stuff going down uh, that I had to had to had to deal with somebody. So, pastor is going through all the stuff. This is what you do. This is what you say. And so, you know, probably 20, 30 minutes, just, I mean, I'm talking, I've got notes. I'm writing notes on what to do, what to say. So after I felt like I had my head around that, I said, okay, pastor, now there's another person in the church. I just need you to help me with this as well. And word for word, he's, he's like, he goes, Dan, you only want one dead body in the river at a time. So, <laughs> translated, stop killing people, man. You're there, you're there to love people and to, to try and build the church. One dead body in the river at a time. One of my favorite memories, and I can still see it in my mind's eye right now, I can picture it right at this very moment. You sitting at our dining room table just over here. I can see you there, I've got a photo of it. And the pastor's surrounding you and they're asking questions, we're talking, we're engaging with you, they're engaging with you, you're engaging with them. And it was an absolutely fantastic time and I could see that you were really enjoying yourself and all of us were really enjoying ourselves. There was a lot of banter, a lot of mockery. Uh, you were laughing, we were all laughing, but there was some serious business going on there because you were downloading information into these guys that was going to really help them and take them forward. And I want to tell you that uh, your investment in the Fiji Fellowship and the two times you've been here to the Suva Church was really valuable and really made a difference. I was invited over to a barbecue at his house. Uh, there's a lot of other, there's a few other disciples there. I'm trying to act like I've got some sort of bearing in my life. I'm trying to act like I've got my life somewhat together. And uh, Pastor Payne uh, had, had cooked a mean barbecue. And then it was time afterwards, he, he uh, brought out some chili. Not to challenge anyone, but he was having that with his meal. And, uh, and I wanted to try some. So I tried some Carolina Reaper. It was just a few little flakes. Uh, and I think I had that on a little small uh, bit of bread or something like that. I've uh, taken that in and it's just hit me. I've just, I was not doing well and uh, sweats came in and I'm just like hyperventilating. I'm just having an out of body experience. I'm like, what is going on here? And I'm trying to pretend like I'm all good. I'm trying to impress Pastor Payne. I'm 
I'm, I'm literally just out of this world and uh, sweating so hard and just trying to pretend like I'm all good. Like, there's a lot of funny stories that I can't tell, but there's one that I can't tell, but I'll have a crack anyway. Early on in the piece, Pastor Payne uh, had invited a visiting pastor to come over and preach for us. And so me and a couple of the other disciples thought, you know what we'll do is we'll take them out for a, a nighttime tour of our Australian bushland. One night we uh, took Pastor Payne out uh, sightseeing and um, decided to take a detour and that was a night that I found out that uh, it was a pretty good shot and uh, while we were driving that night we uh, got lost and then we tried to find our way out of that place and we got a little bit more lost and then it started raining and um, then we got even more lost. I had Michael Zapata as my co-driver that night and I'm blaming him for the fact that we got lost and have done for the last 11 years. Long and short of visit, we got lost. And when I say we got lost, I mean, we got really, really lost. The couch that Mike had found on the side of the road and chucked on the back of his ute starts getting real stinky because it's getting wet. Everyone's sort of sitting on this couch on the back of the truck and uh, Pastor Payne, his phone disappears somewhere. We don't know where that went. I was just grateful that we managed to get Pastor Payne back in time for prayer past sun up the next morning. The sun, well, we were, I remember coming up over the hill and sun was coming up. And uh, we're like, well, we're gonna get home in time for prayer. What I would admire most uh, about Janice is just her godliness and her, uh, she's a real prayer warrior. She's a fountain of creativity, always bubbling over with ideas and that has been really wonderful working in the nursery. I should say this uh, without any further delay, that there is the hidden partnership of your life and unfortunately we weren't able to have Janice here with you. Uh, but we know that she is such a faithful helper. She stood alongside of you. She's always smiling. She's always pleasant. She's been a wonderful example of what a pastor's wife should be. And Janice, I know you'll be listening to this from Coral and I. Uh, we want to thank you so much for your investment, which is often working behind the scenes and just working with people and loving them. You've done a fabulous job. And you're going to have a fantastic crown in heaven, Janice. She's also encouraged me just through her gentle way of just being more gracious with people. There was a couple of things that she would often say is, you know, before you do anything is to consider the situation, have compassion on the person or the situation uh, before any confrontation. So what I admire most about Janice is her heart. Um, she's got a very caring heart and she's very thoughtful. She's always looking for ways to help people. She's um, always watching out to making sure people are being taken care of. She's always praying for people and um, she's very um, concerned about the elderly, the widows, the, the single women and 
She's got a really true heart for the people of God and she cares about the church and I admire her deeply. Thank you, Janice, for being a blessing to me and my family. Because of you, I'm a better wife and a better mother. Over the years, I've had a lot of fun with you. When I first spent time with you, I loved how down to earth you were, just how you were you and how you made me feel comfortable being around you. So much of who I am is because of your influence in my life. So much of how I've raised our children, how I've built a home is because of your influence in my life. You've become such a dear friend, a mother to me. After talking to you on the phone, I not only just feel better because of the words of wisdom that you've given me, but because of our great laughs. So um, now might be the good time to let Pastor Payne know that Rosemary and I have planned to sail across to Gallup to steal you away for a couple of days. Love you, Janice. Hi, Janice. I just want to say a big thank you for all that you have done while you've been here. I'm so blessed to have had you as my pastor's wife. Thank you for every chat, making yourself available to me. For every pearl of wisdom you ever gave me, I'm going to treasure them all. And thank you for every creative advice you ever gave me for just being yourself. I really do love and appreciate you. And I look forward to hearing what great things God will do in you and pastor's lives in Gallup. Janice has a, had a great impact on my life. Just watching her, um, as she's just been reaching out to people and she's always trying to do it in fun ways. She's um, it's had a great impact on me because I realise that uh, being a, a Christian woman is a very practical thing and we need to be about God's business, caring about the people in the church and doing whatever we can to help the people in the church and to be reaching out to the souls. And um, that's really... Um, impacted my life. Well, I can't believe that it's been 12 years since um, Dad and Mom and I arrived in Beachboro. It's wild to think that that was 12 years ago. Um, also makes me feel a little old so that's that's great but um anyway uh, thinking back to those early years in perth i have to say those are some of my um, fondest memories and definitely um some of the best memories i have with my parents are um from my years in australia with them uh to say that australia holds a special place in my heart is an understatement um for sure and thinking back um, to the early years in Perth and really the early months in Perth, one of the biggest things that stands out in my mind is just how friendly everyone was. And it seemed like for the first month we were there, we were over at someone's house for dinner a um, couple times a week. I mean, my parents and I used to joke like, oh, this is not good for us. You know, we'd go have dinner and dessert and hot drinks and Cadbury chocolate. <laughs> and, um, you know, I definitely think that Australia for me um, is such a reference point of what God can do in a church and with um, such an amazing group of people. And I can't wait to see that all God continues to do in Australia and in the Beachboro Church. And I personally want to say thank you um, to everyone for loving my parents, um, looking after them all these years. You are all very special to us and um, their time in Australia, my time in Australia, is a reference point and really um, one of the best chapters of my life. The impact that Pastor Payne has had on my life, gosh, where do I start? It's immeasurable. He's impacted me in my confidence that God will move in being fruitful. I've seen people get saved and lock in in my time here that I've had a direct impact on. What impact has had Pastor Pay? Oh my goodness. In every way, every day for 12 years. He's a general uh, in, in God's, um, God's army. Um, one time I said to him, that I could tell the difference from the man that has been 
infected by him and the ones that have not been infected by him. And so he said, you know, what do you mean infected? And I said, well, I, in, in, in the good sense, in the, in the real sense, uh, what you have is infectious. The impact Pastor Payne's had on our life has been as my only real spiritual father. I grew up without um, any father figure. Uh, I was taken off my mother at a young age, so to, to have that lack of father figure and then to come into to church, um, I had this, this resentment of, of a father figure and authority in my life, but he changed that. Some of the very practical things that he's taught in the Bible hours and even in, the, in conversations with him to do with raising your family, marriage, children, Pastor Payne's Bible hours, 10 out of 10, 100 out of 100. To be honest, without Pastor Payne's ministry, without Pastor Payne, I don't know where I'd be. Um, it's just been a real help. Um, he's really been a spiritual father to me. I remember coming up to as a brand new convert and uh, I was struggling with various things at the time. And I came up to, you know, I was uh, standing at the altar at church and I said, Pastor, I don't think I'm going to make it. He said uh, to me, Brad, how long have you been saved? Which I answered and said, just a couple of months. And you said, and, and how long, Brad, have you, have you been sinning for? I said, 37 years. So uh, to that you replied, uh, you've got a lot of making up to do. Why don't you just give God some time? And um, uh, I thought that was just a really good uh, piece of advice that you gave to me at that time. I had the privilege of going out uh, a few Friday nights ago with the young guys into the city to soul win. Um, and sitting back afterwards, we were having pizza and fellowshipping. Sitting there, I was reflecting on when I was about 13 or 14, going to a Gen Next back in the, in the venue at church. And in those days, it was just a games night. You went along, you played some ping pong, had some food, hung out with your mates. But sitting there that Friday night a few weeks ago, I reflected on that and how much the culture has changed in our church to the fact that a few young guys, 20 young people, are willing to go out into the city on a free night and win people to Jesus. We pray with 11 people that night and it was a joy to sit around the table and fellowship and, and reminisce of what God did that night. It takes a bit of time for it to sink in. And then when you look back, wow, look what God has done. Uh, you injected such a faith uh, and a confidence. You showed us that we can expect to be fruitful, that it's not a lifelong sentence to beating yourself up but that it's a joy to serve God and be involved in ministry, preaching the gospel, uh, and that we can see souls saved, have fruitfulness, and make a lasting impact. You know, if you look at my life and you see anything good, if you see, you know, a spiritual impartation, that is because of Pastor Payne. When he first came, I didn't have an expectation of fruitfulness. Uh, I didn't think that, uh, I could have revival or I could do outreaches and people would get saved. But Pastor Payne believed in me. He taught me that I could have fruitfulness, uh, that I could have dominion. And my ministry and my life has been completely changed by him and his investment. We're out in the country driving and I'm talking to him, we're probably sitting on 100 Ks and I'm asking him some questions when all of a sudden he starts saying, help him, Jesus, help this man, Jesus, help him. And I'm thinking, what's he talking about? I said, what, Pastor Payne? He said, the car behind us has just lost control. And behind us, a guy fell asleep at 100 kilometres an hour, hit the side of the road. He should have rolled down in the paddock, but he caught a big stump and dragged it along the side of the gutter for probably nearly 60, 70, 80 yards. And uh, this man was a backslider. We had actually got to bring him home and talk to him. He was a backslider. And I remember thinking, Pastor Payne saved that man from hell that day because of his prayer. Thank you, Pastor Payne and Janice, for giving your lives to us and rescuing us and continuing to do that for the whole of the 12 years you've been here. Yes, yeah, so if I can just say thank you to uh, you, Janice, for all your help, um, just personally and then uh, just with coming to you with um, just in some of your wisdom for decisions. From myself and my family, is uh, we will never be the same. 
I personally would like to thank both Pastor Payne and Janice. Um, I feel that uh, when you came over here, um, you really saved our lives. You really helped us to have faith again that God can use men to uh, fulfill his call upon this earth. So I have to thank you, Pastor Payne, Janice, for making yourself available to come over, spend these beautiful 12 years with us. Pastor and Janice, on behalf of Jess and myself and our four children, our whole family, we do want to say a huge thank you for the last 12 years of your investment in our lives. Uh, Holly and I, uh, we value your uh, leadership, your impact in our lives, and we do appreciate everything you've done for us. On behalf of myself and my wife, Pastor, we really love you, and um, we're just so, so, so thankful for the years that we got to have with you. Pastor Payne and Janice, I would like to say thank you very much for your mission accomplished in Australia and for accomplishing it so successfully. Thank you for planting a church in Sabah, Malaysia. Thank, thank you, you, Pastor Payne. On behalf of my wife, my kids and I, I just want to say a big thank you to Pastor Payne and Janice for your the last 12 years of your lives invested into this church and in this nation. Pastor Payne uh, and Janice, just want to say thank you for your investment here in the last 12 years. You'll never know the impact that you've had. On behalf of my family, thank you for your time and your investment in our lives. We really do appreciate your ministry, all that you've put into us and into the church there at Beachborough. Pastor Payne, I want to tell you that I, I love you. Uh, thank you for your ministry. Thank you for your time. Words are not enough. You know that. Uh, uh, but I'm so grateful that you're my father in the faith. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you for coming to Perth, investing your life and, and planting your life here. And I can't wait to see all the fruit that's to come and all the fruit that's going to, uh, we're going to see in, in light of eternity. Very big thank you for all that you have done for us personally, but for all of the churches in the Australian Fellowship, for the years that you've invested uh, into our country, into our churches and into our lives. Thank you so much for the investment you made into the Australian Fellowship and also in our lives and uh, for the decision to marry us. We're very thankful and uh, we are blessed by that. Uh, thank you so much for your sacrifice. We love you heaps and we'll miss you. Thank you so much for your investment in the Australian Fellowship for, what is it now? I guess it's 12 years that you've been there in Australia. And I certainly know what it's like to uproot your family, pack all your home into a container and ship it off across the seas to another nation, to an unfamiliar culture and uh, environment. And you've done exactly that. Thank you for your investment in all of the people in Australia. I'm talking about all of our pastors, all of our churches, and not least of all, the Beachborough Church. Thank you, Pastor Payne. I just want to say thank you to Pastor Payne and Sister Janice for coming to Australia. You've made a huge impact in our lives for me and my family, my wife, and we're so, we are forever grateful for all that you've done for us, your investment, time, and energy, and money, and all that, all that you've done for us. We are grateful for it, aren't we guys? Who's, who's our favourite pastor? Pastor Payne. Pastor Payne. Liv and I uh, really appreciate you. Uh, right from when I got saved, you were super gracious with me and I really admired you and uh, all that you've done in my life from discipling me and um, helping me now pastoring. Um, I really do. I look up to you. I just want to say thank you uh, for your investment in our lives over these past 12 years. Lindsay and I are so grateful for all that you've put into us and we're thankful for the sacrifice that you made, you and Janice made to leave your family uh, for such a long period of time and uh, we're grateful that you uh, thought it was worth it. Um, 
thank you for all of those difficult situations that you helped me through, uh, untying those difficult knots, and I'm going to appreciate it and, and be thankful for your investment forever. We'd like to say thank you so much for coming to Perth, for leaving family and friends for the last 12 years restoring a broken church to a now a church full of life, vision and fruitfulness. Uh, Tina and I and my children have been hugely impacted by your leadership, discipleship and friendship. Thank you Pastor Payne and Sister Janice for being here in Australia with us for the last 12 years. Uh, your investment and the time that you've spent uh, on with the Australian Fellowship and um, all of us West Australian pastors. We do appreciate your leadership and the investment and the wonderful um, example that you are. We would not be here without you or the Beachborough Church. Uh, you have been a great example. You have been faithful. You have been strong. And we just appreciate you, your support, uh, and your friendship. And we will miss you. I want to say thank you to both Pastor Payne and Janice on behalf of my family. The 12 years you've put in here have impacted our parents, Susan, my generation, our children, and our grandchildren. And that wasn't possible without the decades of faithful service that you put in in obedience to Jesus that prepared you for this 12 years. And I'm sure the 12 years of faithfulness built on the decades of faithfulness before that will cause a reaping and a blessing in Gallup and beyond.